Good morning, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here, live from Weather Trends 360 Studio here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It is the 3rd of September. We are in the peak historical week of uh, hurricane activity, and uh, certainly living up to the, the week at least this year with uh, just catastrophic uh, Hurricane Dorian here. Uh, again, uh, the tracks here on the left are from the models, and the um, chart on the right is the official Hurricane Center forecast. Very, very close to keeping this thing just off the east coast. Hopefully no landfall, but if there is, it's still risky for the uh, outer banks of North Carolina here as we get later this week. Um, the good news is if you stay in the left side of the hurricane, it's substantially less damaging than the right side. The right side can be catastrophic. Uh, even in a major hurricane, the left side, if you're 70 miles away, which Florida and most of the South Carolina area will be, hopefully, um, that the damage is substantially less, even though it's a major hurricane. So definitely heed all the warnings. There's obviously hurricane warnings up for the Florida coast. You're still going to see you know, large waves, some minimal tidal surge on the left side, but uh, minimal compared to the right side. Um, so again, certainly some damage, uh, but again, we're, we're dodging a bullet here, hopefully, and let's hope that this uh, system stays just off North Carolina. The Outer Banks, um, again, probably the, the highest risk uh, at this stage. If we look at uh, some of the facts for Dorian here, it's just uh, certainly historic, to say the least. Tied for number two in terms of strongest wind speeds uh, at landfall, 185 miles per hour. Um, Wilma was similar in 05, Gilbert 90, 1988, Labor Day system in 1935. Number one was Allen back in 1980. It had 190 mile sustained winds, but uh, it did not make landfall at that speed. So Dorian is uh, very strong, obviously, in terms of uh, landfall sustained winds of 185. Um, tied for number one in terms of the longest, um, strongest landfalling hurricane. Again, tying um, the Labor Day hurricane back in 1935, which was equally strong to, uh, to Dorian, again, many, many moons ago. Uh, number six for lowest pressure, and uh, a lot of Cat 5, 7 actually have passed through the Bahamas over the years. Uh, Dorian, Matthew, Joaquin in 15, Francis in 2004, many of us remember Floyd in 99. Obviously, Andrew was catastrophic for Southeast Florida in 92, and the Bahamas, and Betsy back in 1965. So, historic storm to say the least. If we look at some of the model guidance here, obviously it's starting to weaken, Cat 3 now, uh, hopefully on its way to a Cat 2, Cat 1, and then a fish storm out to sea, and Ireland can will probably get the remnants here in a, in a week or so. Uh, waves still very large, 10 to 20 foot waves on top of a, a little bit of a storm surge. Again, if you stay in that right front quadrant, you can have a 15 to 20 foot storm surge with 20 foot waves on top of that. So you're talking about a 40 foot wall of water on the right side of the system. On the east side, the left side actually, again, substantially less. So again, some impact here for the east coast. Definitely heat all local warnings, but uh, let's pray here. We're dodging a bullet, uh, to say the least. Looking at the current satellite here this morning, again, uh, Dorian, obviously going to just make a hopefully a glancing blow to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Uh, let's hope it doesn't make in landfall inland. Um, tropical potential number seven is going to head toward uh, Mexico, northern Mex Mexico. System over Port Bermuda has got a 40% chance of developing, but that's again going to remain a fish storm. Good news, we've got some cold fronts coming through the east coast, and that'll help keep these systems off the east coast here uh, as we go, uh, at least for the next couple weeks. And 90% chance for that system off Africa, but again, that'll be a fish storm. I always say that you're eventually, if you live in the tropics, and unfortunately we're putting millions and millions more people on coastlines and islands, um, obviously we all love our, our beaches but uh, obviously very dangerous when you're in the tropics so the chart on the left is uh, major hurricane strikes eventually you're gonna get hit um, New England has been hit by some catastrophic storms back in the in the 30s and uh, again it's just a matter of time before we have another one um, Sandy was nothing compared to what we saw back in the in the 30s and some of those big catastrophic uh, New England hurricanes so it's just again always a matter of time and uh, again just more population is gonna be a bigger impact uh, map on the right is just all hurricane activity, so you can't even see uh, most locations because there are quite so many hurricanes over the last 165 years. I always say that physics is uh, meteorology is physics, fluid dynamics. If we just had one storm, this is easy physics, easy fluid dynamics. The problem in meteorology is you have millions and millions of drops in the oceans, storms, and uh, thousands of storms and in interactions in the upper atmosphere up to 100,000 feet, and fluid and physics tries to predict all that. So hurricanes are the hardest. They're the pure chaos. Um, so what we try to employ is more of a statistical method because, again, chaos is not going to get you even a week out. Um, obviously, we've experienced here with Dorian how uh, uh, this time last week, uh, probably next to nothing in terms of predicting this, and then all of a sudden it exploded to one of the strongest uh, hurricanes uh, on record. So, again, models do well at times. Uh, they at least give us some guidance, but they're not uh, not that great. So statistics, this is kind of our outlook for, for the season using statistics. Um, again, let's hope we're entering a little bit of a lull here after Dorian because uh, we certainly need it. 
if we look at uh, this week overall, 3 through 9 September, uh, max temps uh, on the right chart there, uh, weekly rainfall on the left. We see that uh, heavy conveyor belt of rain uh, along the east coast. Again, uh, again, let's hope and pray here that the, the core of the system, the right front quadrant and the eye, stay just off the coast uh, here. But again, still going to have some heavy rain and tropical storm force gust, even some low hurricane gust, uh, again, up and down the southeast coast. Overall, we say it's cooler than last year nationally, 14th coolest in 30 years, so kind of a below average week on a national scale, even though it's hot west and cool cool northeast midwest. Um, tad drier than last year, except for that obviously deluge along the east southeast coast, uh, ninth driest in 30 years nationally. If we jump ahead here to uh, next week, uh, mid-September, 10 through 16, again, same general pattern. Again, kind of cool in the Great Lakes northeast in terms of highs, below average. Coolest in five years nationally, 14th warmest in 30 years, so still about average, a little bit above average for the nation as a whole. Uh, wettest in 11 years, third wettest in 30 years, uh, above average week uh, here for next week. Aggregating for this for the two-week period for the world overall, so this is 3 through 6 September again. You see that um, eastern Canada, eastern, at least the Great Lakes, uh, northeastern U.S. is on the cool side. Uh, parts of uh, northwest Africa are cool, parts of eastern, uh, I'm sorry, western Europe are cool. Uh, again, overall, Canada is cool some five years still, so they've been running on a cool trend here. U.S. is a little cooler than last year. Europe is cooler than last year. Brazil is kind of a hot spot, fifth warmest in 30 years, uh, again, with all those fires down there. Australia is the warmest in six years with their winter. Um, so with that, folks, we'll end here with the uh, the little uh, Angelina Kirk, uh, first day in preschool. Uh, I've never seen a kid so excited to go to school, but maybe this is the norm. We'll, we'll see how she fares uh, uh, later today when we get the report, uh, how she her first day went. So all the kids going back to school here today in the, in the Northeast, uh, many of you, uh, be safe. Uh, God bless you, and uh, we will be back here this time next week.